Greetings and welcome to Growth Hacking Secrets. I'm your host, Mohammed Siddiq from Atlanta, Georgia, and the co author of New Success Secrets available on Amazon. On this episode, we have a special guest, team building facilitator, expert on creativity and innovation, TEDx public speaker, and she is no other than Christiana Michaelis. Please join me to give a warm welcome to our guest, Christiana Michaelis. Christiana, welcome. Thank you, Sadiq. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you. Let me start with this. Where were you? What happened? Who you were surrounded with that inspired you to do what you do today? Um, so my story as an entrepreneur is a little bit different than a, a lot of other stories in the sense that for 40 plus years, it never once even crossed my mind to become an entrepreneur. And it's not because I thought that was a bad thing or I was bad at it. It just was not a thing that was on my agenda at all. Like my fa in my family, there were no entrepreneurs. I didn't have friends who were entrepreneurs. So it was really something that I didn't even consider as an option. And here I am now calling myself an entrepreneur. So how did I get there? Um, I grew up and I always was a creative person. So as a kid, I was a musician and I played first the piano and then the double bass. And I was in many orchestras and did chamber music. So it was a natural decision for me. Um, after high school, I wa uh, wanted to study music. And so I got my master's degree in music and also in German uh, language arts because I'm from Germany. You might have already been able to tell by my accent. So I was born and grew up in Germany. And while I was working on my master's, I um, did a couple internships in theater. And uh, after my second internship, I really got bitten by the theater bug. And so I decided after my graduation that I wanted to go and work in this world. So I started um, the ladder really low as an intern, then I worked myself up and I directed then um, mostly operas and but also some theater plays. And after uh, like 10 years working in the theater field, I decided to move on to a different direction and became an educator and learned, get another second degree in teaching and did that for a while. Then I moved to the United States and um, here I decided that um, I was not the, the teaching profession didn't work out for our family as well. Like it was long hours. We had four kids then at some point. And so I needed a job that was a little bit more flexible. So I kept stretching my mind. And it was my husband who then said, why don't you do something on your own? Why don't you create a business? And I was like, Ugh, I, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. But we kept thinking about different options and throwing away all these options. And then slowly but surely, the idea evolved that then morphed into the business that I have now, which is called the Dirty Easel. And with the Dirty Easel, I'm trying to combine my firsthand experience in creativity and then my experience as uh, uh, somebody who helps people to learn and to grow. And then I also added a bunch of research on creativity. And so putting this all together, I craft those um, leadership trainings and uh, team development programs that are really there to help people develop their creativity in business and uh, be able to use that creativity to become more innovative and flexible and adaptive to our crazy uh, quick change of time. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. Christiana, what are the top three mistakes to avoid when it comes to team building or trying to make it create a better leaders, you know? So it's always hard to, I mean, there are so many mistakes and every entrepreneur makes so many mistakes. So I'm going to pick out some that I feel like are not just relevant to me as a person, but I, I think uh, are a little bit more typical uh, mistakes that happen in general. So the first one is when I started my business, I had the concept of being really broad. So I wanted to be uh, accessible for a lot of different people. So I did um, painting events at night uh, in, in bars and restaurants. I offered birthday parties for kids. I had summer camps for kids. I had um, corporate team building. So I, I was like all over the place thinking, I mean, everybody must need 
one or the other of these um, offers, but that turned out to be not true. And so I learned that the more niche you are, the more unique, the more specific you are, the better it is. Like it's starting with, with my marketing. I had no idea where to market because I had to market everywhere. And that doesn't work, at least with a small uh, budget uh, that you have an, as an entrepreneur. So my big learning lesson there was like, find your niche, find your, do you really want to do and start really small? And if that runs well, then you can add on a bunch of other side uh, businesses that, that make you grow into a much larger entity, but it's not a good place to start. Um, the second mistake, yeah, 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 second, yeah. second mistake was that I um, wanted to do everything myself, like bootstrap because I, um, I I was fearful, like I didn't want to take huge financial risks. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I'm going to do it all myself. And there is some positive aspects to that. Um, but there's also, you can do it in, in an extreme. So I did not hire anybody. I learned everything like marketing, bookkeeping, sales, everything um, just on my own, which is is um, a very long process. So my my advice from this experience is, I think even if you don't have a big budget, it makes sense to find somebody at the beginning who is kind of a guy just to tell you, look at this and look at that and just helps you building this more general path and not trying to do everything um, on your own. Even though I have to say the advantage is that I'm um, now able to understand all aspects of the business. And so when I actually do hire people now to help me with certain aspects, I really know what the challenges are, how it works. And so I'm a, I'm a much better partner um, than, than I would have been otherwise. So there's mm -hmm. pros and cons to, to both, of, uh, both of those aspects. Wonderful. Wow, that's a great uh, mistake to avoid. So Christiana... <laughs> Uh, looks like you have transitioned from a different mindset to a 180 angle to an entrepreneur mindset because those are different minds. So what's your greatest failure story? What did you learn and how did you recover from that? Um, so I think the first one, one story I want to share is um, something that also kind of happens by accident. He, I'm from Austin. And so in Austin, we all have a, a tons of food trailers. Mm -hmm. And so I call this the food trailer principle. So you start small with a little trailer, see what people like. And then if they go crazy and the lines get really long, then you find your restaurant and then you build your restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I did the same thing. I originally wanted to, to rent out a space and build it there. And then for some reasons that fell apart and I was disappointed, but then I made it work into a more flexible mobile um, business. And thank goodness, like that was, that, that saved me. Otherwise, I think the business would have crashed very quickly because I have events with 10 people. I have events with 100 people. How will I ever find the space that accommodates all this? And I would have had so much more um, um, overhead that I avoided. So my lesson is here. Um, it's really good to, to start small again and experiment, see what works and then grow, but make sure you have room to fail in many different ways and don't burden yourself with all these constraints. You can have the most perfect business plan. It's never going to be just like it's scripted out in the business plan. So the more you have room to experiment, the better um, you, you'll be able to adapt your business to what actually is needed on the market and wanted. Christian, I'm going to borrow your line. Have a rooms to fail. With your permission, I'm going to use it at some other. Okay. Yeah, this absolutely. Is room to experiment, rooms to fail, because people are looking for success. They're not leaving, keeping a room for the failure. It's a great one. Thank you. You are, I can tell you, you are a really creative person based on how you're picking up those words because it's very powerful, easy to understand, you know. And I know the acceptance of failure um, has grown a lot compared to 20 years ago. Um, mm. It's uh, the, the difficulty is finding what kind of failures are really helpful. And they are also stupid failures, like stupid mistakes. Like if you keep doing the same mistake <laughs> over and over again, that's obviously stupid. Yeah. But I think you have to know that building a business will include failures. And so 
if you have that mindset, then you're looking out for the failures. You're accepting them because they're part of part of they're they're not avoidable. And so I think that's a very different uh, mindset to to um, to bring into the business. Wonderful. So let's talk about your successes, success secrets. So with enough about failures, enough about your failure story. Let's just change the fight and get an, you know, success secrets. What are your top three secrets of success to team building, business building, you know? Yeah, so one was um, what I started is, is this food, what I call the food trailer principle, like start small so you do have the room um, to experiment. Another one um, is like for me personally, I think uh, part of my success is because I really love learning like i love discovering new things i'm i'm a curious person and i think that is very helpful that you are just open to dive into new material that you don't have the uh the mindset oh i know what i want and and i just have to market that it's like this this continuous like i think you said that at the very beginning when we talked like i'm a student and i think that's exactly the mindset i'm talking about so being continuously a student and open to develop your mind, challenge your mind and and grow and learn continuously. And the third um, um, thing that is very important for my success, but I think also success in general, is understanding how to work together with people. And being a sole entrepreneur is a very lonely business. <laughs> and you need people um, to help you along the way. You need people to talk to, to run ideas by. And what I've, I see a lot is a very small, limited understanding of networking. Um, often people just go networking because they try to find their, their clients and then they have this conversation and then they want to make a sale. Uh, let me give you one example. Like I was very engaged in an organization that was is called Texas Women in Business. Mm -hmm. I was on the board there and I organized a huge conference uh, for this organization, which took up way too much of my time and um, was a great success, but it did not lead to any, not one business that came just out of that. But I met so many people. I worked so hard together with people. We got to know each other that it really created this structure and then that's what ultimately is really growing your business. It's not just this linear, oh, it's me, it's you, I sell, you sell, and that's that's the end of the transaction. It's building out this network. And then one person recommends the other and then the other. And that's how things are happening. And I've seen a lot of success coming from this very broad understanding of, of networking that is, uh, that is giving, that is uh, helping others. and um, and creating uh, uh, this environment of we are in this together and uh, we are here to help each other out. Yeah, be a part of a value chain with everybody as they're adding a value to each other. You know, so. exactly, exactly. Without a uh, without a specific goal, I need you. I want to talk to you because you. Can, you I know you need to buy my product, and yeah. that's not how it works. Yeah, uh, yeah. wonderful, Christiana. We are about to wrap up. And how people who are watching this right now can support you. So I want to invite everybody who's watching right now to, to join the conversation, to reach out to me via email or schedule a, a talk. Because what I want to talk about um, with as many business leaders as possible is how you use the creativity in your business. Because... Um, we're now at a point where everybody, almost everybody I talk to acknowledges that creativity is really important in any kind of business. But still, 80% of people believe that uh, they are not living up to their full creative potential. So I want to know, how does it hurt your business to not be able to use the full put, uh, creative potential for yourself, for your whole team, for everyone? And how would the, your company look like if you were able to fulfill your your the creative ability that was given to you and um, to learn how to use your creativity and how to flourish and nurture it and to have a culture in which creativity is a part of every day, uh, everything that you do every day for everyone. So I would love to hear from you what your thoughts and experiences are on that. Wonderful. And the website is the dot dirty easel dot com. T H E 
D-I-R-T-Y-E-A-S-E-L.com. Don't look at my English because it's written on my screen. I'm reading it right from front. Why mm-hmm. I'm saying this? So that way you better go and visit it. I did visit the site. It's a great looking site. Thank you. <clears throat> so the dirty easel.com. So Christiana, I asked this question to every guest. I will what would you say to about uh, today's experience on the growth hacking secret show? So um at this time right now, we are all cel- uh, uh, celebrating um, one year anniversaries of being in this time that is like no other in the pandemic. And I've seen so many businesses um, struggle with this period. But I've also seen that there's a lot of uh, creativity happening in, in these times because we can't do business as normal. We all have to shift and to p- pivot and to explore um explore areas that we are not comfortable with but also sometimes this can be a lot of pressure on your creativity and you feel like i can't do this it's just overwhelming so what my call for you is to encourage you to learn how to swim in an ocean of ambiguity and uncertainty and just become comfortable with living in a world that is constantly changing and take that from this COVID experience, that this is something that we can learn and build and become more resilient in to be able to navigate all these complex things, because this is, this is not going to be the only um, big change that we will encounter in our business and our life. So we better get uh, ready and prepared to whatever is coming. And there's a way to do that. And I want to encourage you to do that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. What would you say as a final word? Go be creative. Um, let you, Don't let yourself be intimidated by thinking you can't do it. But there is so much, like especially as an entrepreneur and business owner, um, there's so much fun in being creative and tap into that side and that's going to be very making you very successful. Yeah, thank you. So go and be creative. Thank you so much, Christian and Michaelis, for sharing your wisdom with us today on the behalf of Growth Hacking Secrets community and our entire team. We really appreciate you. This is Mohammed Sadiq signing off from Atlanta, Georgia. Until the next episode, all good wishes. Thank you.